Hey, what is up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna cover some of the, my favorite apps which are not design related, but I use it to inform my designs or manage my designs. You know, it's all those apps which you wouldn't target or market for designers, but they're extremely useful because we have, let's say, a built-in feature which you can apply to user testing sessions or built-in feature which you can manage your productivity for designs or, you know, ideations and stuff like that. Let's jump right into it. So app number one, as you can see on my screen, I have Google Docs. You might think, oh, so what do you use it to write reports or questions or user testing findings or user research planning or stuff like that? Exactly, I use for that. But the best bit about Google Docs is voice to type functionality. If you approach a person and you need to do an interview and you just need to talk to them, you could either transcribe your notes or write down your notes or have a, you know, an assistant to write down a note who would like help you to observe and write down the notes. But Google has a built functionality, which is voice typing. As you can see, it opens this type of widget and I can just click and speak right into it. And Google is just gonna write it down. And it's pretty accurate. And you know, it depends if you have an accent. My accent is probably not too bad because it's pre picking up pretty well. Well, not so much. As you can see, there is Nexus for some sort of reason. But anyways, oh, and it actually corrects it a little bit based on what I say later on. But imagine that I'm now interviewing you and saying, hey, how do you approach that things? How your typical day to day looks like as a user? And Google would just perfectly transcribe it for me and provide the transcript to where I can search, index and use for my, you know, research findings. App number two is called Gifox. I can just either select a screen, I can, you know, specify exactly what I want to be like. I could, you know, specify the settings of how the downscale could be like. I could specify if I want to capture cursor, but it basically captures what you do on a screen in a GIF. And it's really useful when you need to communicate, let's say, micro interactions to your developers. And as you can see, I would maybe show that interaction or what happens there. Close it down and GIFOX does the rest, which basically creates a GIF of that. There's a lot of application. It's really useful when you need to communicate exactly what's going on in just a tiny snapshot. App number three, is Ice Cream Recorder. It's a simple app for recording, let's say your user testing sessions. You can either screenshot an area, do a custom area right away, and just to show you what I mean. I like the interface and the usability of the tool because it's quite easy to set it up. And from there, I just hit record, three to one, and I can see exactly what the users do. It's built for, let's say, streaming or recording tutorials like, like I do right now but you can use it for user testing. App number four, as you can see, if you haven't noticed yet in my progress bar, I have this day 33. So I'm recording this at 11 a.m. You know, I set it up in my preferences in this widget that my day starts at six and it ends at nine. That's my, you know, core working hours, whatever I do. And you can set exactly what you want, you know, your life uh, deadline if you want or any other goal deadline. So it helped me to track. But as you can see, it provides some simple metrics exactly to identify exactly what I have. As a designer, as a manager, as a lead, I tend to schedule my time with, let's say, a first few hours of a maker hours. And on the end of the day, try to do more managerial stuff and more soft skill team management type of approach. And, you know, catching up with uh, doing design reviews with my, you know, let's say junior designers and, and all those bits. So it helps me kind of identify exactly when I should kickstart that or when I should approach it. What I'm going to show you is Google Keep because that's where I keep my majority of notes. As you can see, I have a lot of UX video ideas, noob to master series ideas of what I could cover. I just write it down. Um, if I do use a research, I use this app to, you know, to add, let's say, who I need to talk to how many more users I need to talk to, what I need to do, maybe pla simple planning of a project uh, to do activities and so forth. Now, it depends how you do your screenshots. You, if you are, let's say on Windows, maybe use one of, you know, a snipping tools. If you use Mac, maybe use a shortcut to just make a screenshot, you know, Command Shift 4 or 3. What comes in hand is any extension on, let's say, Chrome on Firefox you can install, which allows you to take a full screenshot. The easiest way is to maybe install one of these. This is 
is a, a free extension I just installed really quickly. I like this one because it's quite easy. I can just say visible screenshot, so what I see now, or the whole page screenshot. And the whole page screenshot is what I'm usually looking for because that's exactly what I need. And you can see it just goes through and boom. It made it and then I can either, you know, like annotate it or just save it right away or share it and that's about it. And when I have my screenshot, I can work on or review and add some notes and maybe pass it to, you know, developers or other designers. So simple as that. Next app is the Doodle app. Quite common app and it's free. How I use it for design purposes because, you know, it's a polling thing. It's, let's say, voting thing. It's a scheduling thing. And the last bit is exactly what I'm using it for. If I'm doing a lot of user interviews and I need to set it up manually because the client, let's say, gives me a list of people I need to contact to, I try to send them the doodle if, uh, let's say, a few dates, a few times, so they can actually pick one. Again, it's not a design app, but it's quite simple, specifying exactly when I can do. As you can see, it linked my, with my calendar to clean the house, which I just did and before this <laughs> thing, but I can specify exactly when I could do it. And as you can see in, in specific slot, and imagine that I can do it on Saturday and Sunday. I would continue and then just send to the people and simply invite them to vote and they can just pick their time so it works for them. Now the next app, is XMI what I find work for me best when let's say thinking about new things, trying to outline or plan the new project or what has to be done, the budget, the intricacies of what I need to find out, the discovery, the ideation bits, who I need to talk to, I use the mind mapping tool. The cool bit about it that is the interface, it has a lot of different features purely for mind mapping or you know I usually call it brain dumping because it usually is if this is my new project how I would use it I would go let's say what do I need to find out in the discovery and that that could be let's say other topics and I can add a subtopic and then it you know it leads to a kind of like a really big map where I can plan out a project but it allows you to make a tree of different things instead of just being bogged down on detail and then losing the sight of a you know smaller okay things. now it's a bit more research related app and it's the Hemingway app it basically clears your copy and myself I'm not really the best writer I try to be but what's good about Hemingway is that if you write something boom it's all colorful and all good. You know, it's good overall. It has 100 words, so it tells you exactly how big it is, but it also clears it up and then I can improve it. So let's one sentence is super hard to read. So it's, it's in this one. In this session, I'll walk you through key steps, yada, 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 yada. As you can see, then I can actually rewrite it and simplify the actual sentence things. And it's essential tool for email writing, invitations for your user interviews, any kind of presentations you're doing, any kind of demos you're doing where you're using copy, even your interfaces. P definitely pick it up. I purchased a pro er version and I use it every single time I write something important. So the next app is about writing, but it's a bit different. It's a bit more of a power tool. If you know any authors write books, they probably write using Scrivener or they're really in a big, big trouble or in a big mess of how to handle things. And how I use Scrivener is purely for user research and specifically research case studies. So when you have, let's say, a lot of articles or a lot of findings you need to put in order or put in some sort of sequence, I use Scrivener. So Scrivener, if you open it, has a lot of different existing templates, but again, it's handling it at scale. Scrivener allows me to not only write the things, so let's say this is my research findings. Maybe I copied it from my Google Doc from voice to type, but I also structure it in chunks, in blocks per se. So almost like making like a book into chapters and manage it. And the best bit is that you can actually search across it too. I can also add ideas. I can add appendixes. I can add anything I want to. I can even, you know, annotate things in a proper way. Packs exactly what you would need for complex writing and user research studies. So I hope this video was useful. I hope you find at least one app you want to give it a go or found some sort of use case for apps you already knew about. If you have apps of your own, which you use for design efforts or development, efforts or product design or UX, leave them down below. I'm really interested to see what tools and gadgets you are using uh, day to day, which actually impact, you know, the way you do your designs. So leave a comment down below, give a like, subscribe to this channel as per usual, and I'll see you next time.